Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's been a long time coming, but today we are finally benchmarking the AMD Ryzen 7 5700U, or should I say the Ryzen 7 4800U, because AMD has gone and done, well, a pretty AMD thing if I'm honest, and re-released one of their older parts as a shiny brand new part with a new name. As everyone is probably familiar with by now, the Ryzen 5000 series is all about Zen 3. Desktop parts like the Ryzen 5 5600X and Ryzen 9 5950X use Zen 3 CPU cores. The APUs like the 5700G and 5600G also use Zen 3. And then we have a number of mobile parts such as the Ryzen 9 5900HX, Ryzen 5 5600H and Ryzen 7 5800U that all use Zen 3 as well. So you might expect that all Ryzen 5000 processors would be using AMD's latest CPU architecture. And that's mostly true, except for a couple of parts in AMD's U-series for ultra-portable laptops. Rather than being based on the new Zen 3 Cezanne die, APUs such as the Ryzen 7 5700U are using Lucien, an older Zen 2 design. This is basically a re-release of the Ryzen 4000 series that's been given a new coat of paint and a new name, kind of like the GPU upgrade from the RX 480 to the RX 580. Now, AMD says that Lucien in the Ryzen 5000 series isn't the same as Ryzen 4000. It's received updates to things like idle power consumption, boost to the Vega GPU, but fundamentally, it's a very similar design using basically the same die, and today we'll be finding out just how similar it really is, at least when it comes to performance. The Ryzen 7 5700U we're looking at today is the fastest Lucien configuration and an equivalent to the Ryzen 7 4800U with all elements of the die unlocked. That means we're getting 8 Zen 2 CPU cores and 16 threads split into two 4-core CCXs. We've got 8 megabytes of L3 cache and 8 Vega compute units. Clock speeds start at 1.8 GHz base on the CPU and go up to 4.3 GHz boost, while the GPU tops out at 1.9 GHz. TSMC's 7 nanometer process is used here. In contrast, the part above in the lineup, the Ryzen 7 5800U, is still an 8-core processor, but because it's a new Zen 3 part, it features a unified CCX and double the L3 cache, up to 16 megabytes. It also features 100 MHz higher clock speeds for both the CPU and GPU, though while the CPU receives quite a big IPC jump due to the shift to Zen 3, the GPU is still the same Vega design. We are also in this interesting situation where the part below the 5700U, the Ryzen 5 5600U, has two fewer CPU cores, but those cores are Zen 3 cores, so potentially the 5600U will be faster than the 5700U in lightly threaded applications due to the difference between Zen 2 and Zen 3. The test system for today's benchmarking is the ASUS ZenBook 14, which I purchased myself from Newegg at a pretty good deal of under US dollars It packs a decent quality 1080p display, 16GB of LPDDR4-3733 memory, and a 1TB SSD, plus a very nice chassis, so to be honest, quite happy with this purchase. But it's not about the laptop really, it's about the APU's performance, which we have configured to either 25 or 15 watts for testing to match other U-series processors we've tested previously for a more apples to apples comparison. The idea being that if you're tossing up between the same laptop with different CPU choices, or similar sorts of laptops in terms of size and cooling capacity, then these benchmarks with the same long-term power limit will be most relevant to you. Ultra-thin 13-inch systems tend to be more towards the 15-watt end of the scale, while slightly larger systems, think your 14-inch stuff, can give you that 25 watts. But of course, when buying, you should do your research into the relevant power configurations of the products you are considering. Kicking off today's benchmarking, we have Cinebench R23 multi-threading, and there's quite a few interesting observations here. At 15 watts, the Ryzen 7 5700U is slightly faster than the Ryzen 7 5800U, which isn't too surprising when previously we found that the 5800U and 4800U performed basically the same at this power level. While Zen 3 provides higher IPC than Zen 2, its larger core design and more cache limits gains in performance at this lower power level. However, when comparing these three CPUs at 25 watts, the 5800U is now clearly ahead with a 7% lead on the 5700U, while the 4800U is able to claw slightly in front of the 5700U. Meanwhile, the 5700U is able to provide a decent performance uplift on the APU it's directly replacing, the Ryzen 7 4700U. Whether we're looking at 25 or 15 watts, the 5700U provides roughly 20% more multi-thread performance, thanks to the addition of SMT pushing the thread count from 8 to 16 on 8 physical cores. 
and Intel's Tiger Lake UP3 processors are no match for Ryzen at multi-threading. They get pretty easily beaten in Cinebench as just four CPU cores isn't enough. Single threading though, that's a bit of a different story. The Ryzen 7 5700U here is, as expected, basically the same as a Ryzen 7 4800U. The boost clock on the 5700U is actually slightly higher at 4.3 versus 4.2 gigahertz, so it performs slightly better here, but we are talking about a basically negligible difference. Meanwhile, the 5800U easily beats the 5700U due to the difference between Zen 2 and 3. The 5800U has 12% higher single thread performance in this test, while both CPUs are beaten by Intel's Tiger Lake Core i7-1165G7. The 5700U is actually 17% slower than the 1165G7 for Cinebench single threading, which is a pretty large margin. In Handbrake, you won't find any substantial difference between the 5700U and 4800U. The 5800U is slightly slower at 15 watts and slightly faster at 25 watts, again matching what we found previously, but realistically all three of these 8 core processors deliver excellent multi-threaded performance considering their power budget. They obliterate Tiger Lake UP3 class CPUs which, as seen by the Core i7-11370H results, basically need 45 watts of power to match what the 5700U can do at 15 watts, a very different sort of efficiency result to what we see in the H series, where Intel is far more competitive with AMD. Next up, Chromium Code Compilation, because I feel you might realistically use an ultra-portable laptop for coding, although compilation times won't be amazing. Basically in this benchmark, the Ryzen 7 5700U performs very well at 15 watts and offers a small improvement to efficiency over the 4800U. However, at the higher 25 watt power limit, it's a bit different and you can see the 5800U taking a comfortable lead here with its higher IPC. We're looking at a 14% performance improvement over the Ryzen 7 4700U at 25 watts, which grows to a 17% margin at 15 watts. Once again, Intel CPUs get taken to task here in this multi-threaded workload, and really, if your compilation can heavily utilize multi-threading, you are far better off with a Ryzen U series CPU. In MATLAB, we have quite an interesting battle between AMD and Intel. The clear best choice for this application in an ultra-portable chassis is the 5800U, with the 5700U providing basically the same performance as the 4800U. This keeps the 5700U competitive with Tiger Lake at 15 watts, but when the Core i7-1165G7 can flex its muscles and boost up to 28 watts, it can provide up to 14% more performance. This is just one of those workloads where the 5700U suffers from the lack of Zen 3. Our XL number crunching benchmark is another workload that suffers from the lack of Zen 3 and especially the lack of extra cache. Excel can quite heavily utilize cache and just 8 megabytes of it here sees the 5700U come in 28% slower than the 5800U and we got lower results than the 4800U as well. However, it still benefits from its 8 core CPU design, Excel is a multi-threaded application, and despite the Core i7-1165G7 including more L3 cache, the 5700U is able to either match or outperform it depending on the power configuration. PC Mark's Essentials test is a pretty important one for ultra-portable laptops as things like uploading, video conferencing, and web browsing are all typical tasks on these systems. The Ryzen 7 5700U performs, once again, just like the 4800U here, which means it is a bit slower than the Core i7-1165G7. We're looking at a 6-8% performance deficit, largely due to the 5700U's weaker single-thread performance compared to Tiger Lake. This is where the 5800U really benefits from Zen 3. Just that switch to a newer core architecture delivers 10% more performance at the same power level on the same process node. 7-zip compression is another test that saw the 5800U benefit heavily from its upgrade to the Zen 3 architecture. The 5700U is left behind here, coming in a couple of percent slower than the 4800U and a couple of percent faster than the 4700U. This is still enough performance to beat Intel's Tiger Lake design, but the margins are quite narrow and even though it's a multi-thread benchmark, the 4-core 1165G7 is punching above its weight due to Intel's Willow Cove CPU design. Meanwhile, for decompression, the 5700U is a powerful processor, coming in just 5% behind the 5800U. This is enough to blow the Core i7-1165G7 off the park. AMD's Zen architecture is simply a beast for decompression work, and the inclusion of 8 cores helps deliver drastically higher performance in this common task. The 5700U has weak cryptography performance. Both Zen 3 and especially Tiger Lake are substantially faster in C Software's AES-256 benchmark, while Zen 2, used in the Ryzen 7 5700U, falls behind. Again, 
not too much of a difference between the 5700U and 4800U, but you are missing out compared to the top end 5800U. Acrobat PDF to image exporting is a heavily single threaded workload, and the 5700U doesn't provide any major performance gains over existing Zen 2 parts like the 4800U. This means the 5700U is still easily outperformed by the Core i7 1165G7 and the Ryzen 7 5800U, which offer 21 and 18% more performance respectively. This is not too different from the Cinebench single threaded results. Adobe Photoshop also benefits from single thread performance, which is where the 5700U struggles relative to Tiger Lake and AMD's Zen 3 processors. The 5700U is quite a bit slower in the Puget workload compared to the Core i7-1165G7, especially at 25 watts, where the 5700U is 25% behind. If Photoshop is an important application for you, then the 5700U is not the best choice. I'll wrap the productivity benchmarks up by taking a quick look at Adobe Premiere performance for exporting, and really there isn't a whole lot of difference between many of AMD's APUs when running Premiere on the integrated graphics. Generally speaking, with video editing workloads you are much better off getting a laptop that has a discrete GPU, even if that GPU is something basic like an MX450 or a GTX 1650 Max-Q. The same applies for DaVinci Resolve as otherwise you will be performance limited by the iGPU. Let's run through some performance comparisons and then we'll get into a bit of gaming performance. When comparing the Ryzen 7 5700U to the Ryzen 7 4800U, which are basically the same CPU design, it's not too surprising to find they perform basically the same. Most applications are within a couple of percent either way, and on average performance is also identical, whether we're looking at 25 or 15 watt performance. Most of the differences we're seeing here could be explained by silicon variants, that's how slim the margins are. Relative to the direct CPU it's replacing though, the Ryzen 7 4700U, the 5700U is a decent performance improvement as we've gone from 8 cores and 8 threads to 8 cores and 16 threads. At 25 watts, that can mean upwards of a 20% performance improvement for multi-threaded workloads, and there's also a small but noticeable upgrade to single threading as well. There is no doubting that the Ryzen 7 5800U is better than the Ryzen 7 5700U, which is basically what we said in our initial review of the 5800U when we compared it to the 4800U. However, the differences do vary a bit depending on the application. The 5700U isn't that much slower for multi-threaded workloads, margins can be as slim as just 5%. However, the 5700U is substantially slower in lightly threaded or cache heavy applications, which does have an impact on benchmarks like Photoshop, Excel and MATLAB. The 5800U is less of an upgrade at 15 watts than it is at 25 watts, but in both situations on average the 5700U is 10% slower or more. Then compared to Intel's Core i7-1165G7, there's two very different stories at play. The 5700U absolutely dominates in multi-threaded benchmarks, delivering upwards of a 70% performance improvement at 25 watts. However, it loses in single-threaded tests, coming in 15-20% to slower. The margins are more in favour of the 5700U at 15 watts, as AMD's design appears to scale very well to lower power levels, However, the overall story of Intel being inferior for multi-threading and superior for single-threading remains the same. Time for some iGPU gaming benchmarks, and we'll start with Grand Theft Auto V. Not much to say here, as the Ryzen 7 5700U, like other top-end Ryzen processors in this chart, appear to be more memory bandwidth limited than anything. My 5700U configuration doesn't have the highest supported LPDDR4X spec, so it suffers a bit relative to other models. In Civilization VI, all of the 5800U, 5700U, and 4800U, the configurations with the full 8 Vega compute units, perform roughly the same in this benchmark. That's good if you want basically the top performance AMD has to offer in their ultra-portable designs. It also leads to faster performance in this game than Intel's Core i7-1165G7, though we are only looking at 15 watt benchmarks here, and Intel is much more competitive at higher power levels. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to accurately test the 25 watt mode for the 5700U in games for this review, so I haven't included those results. Most modern iGPUs are quite capable of gaming in CSGO, and that's certainly the case with the Ryzen 7 5700U. Performance isn't quite as good as the higher two models, but in the same ballpark, and superior to the models beneath it. However, the Ryzen design is outperformed by the Core i7-1165G7 at this power level if you get one with fast LPDDR4X memory. Next up we have F1 2019, and in this game, running using the ultra-low preset, the 5700U ends up sitting between the 5800U and 4700U in terms of gaming performance, and right around the mark of the Core i7-1165G7. 
you'd probably want to drop the resolution down a notch in this title though, as 1% lows of 30fps in a racing game is not ideal. And finally, we have the results from Rainbow Six Siege, where once again there is quite a cluster of Ryzen processors, all within a few frames of one another. It seems in this title that once you hit about 7 compute units, adding that 8th compute unit doesn't matter too much, as we're more power limited than anything else. Still, it's quite impressive to get over a 30fps experience in this game, running medium settings at just 15 watts, though performance is lower than the best Core i7-1165G7 configurations that I've tested. After testing the Ryzen 7 5700U over the past few weeks, I had a pretty strong sense of deja vu, like I had already tested this exact same processor before, and that's because, well, basically I had. The Ryzen 7 5700U performs like a Ryzen 7 4800U, which if you look at the design and specifications makes perfect sense as they are practically the same part outside of a few minor alterations. This really is a case of AMD packaging up something old and selling it as new. Now that can be a bad move if the old part was complete trash, but that's not really the case with the 5700U. Despite using AMD's older Zen 2 architecture, this APU is still very competitive in the market, especially in multi-threaded workloads where it's within a few percent of the best U-series processors available. And graphics performance is largely unchanged as well, because AMD is still using a similar Vega design in their newer Zen 3 APUs. The drawback to this approach is that the 5700U has fallen behind other processors in single and lightly threaded workloads. The Zen 3 based Ryzen 7 5800U is quite a bit faster here, as is Intel's Tiger Lake Core i7-1165G7. And single thread performance is pretty important in an ultra portable laptop, where you're more likely to be doing tasks like web browsing, basic uploading, document editing, and Photoshop, rather than rendering videos or doing heavy multi-core CPU tasks. The 5700U is still very fast in some standard laptop tasks, like Excel and file decompression, but someone looking for an everyday laptop might be better suited to the 1165G7, or especially the 5800U. From that perspective, if I was looking at a laptop that had both the 5700U and 5800U configurations, I think it's worth spending that bit extra to get the 5800U, especially if the price difference is less than 10%. I think the 5700U is more suited to a mid-range or mainstream product, which this ASUS ZenBook 14 basically is, as I spent less than $900 US on it. That's a great price for what I got and fair value for the performance. I wouldn't want to be forking out $1,200 or more, that's for sure. My recommendation of getting the 5800U over the 1165G7 in general still stands as well, though that might change with upcoming older lake processors. Again, I don't think the Ryzen 7 5700U is a bad processor, and AMD using older architectures to fill gaps in their lineup is an interesting tactic, as opposed to last generation, where AMD cut SMT support instead. However, in doing so, AMD are using their precious 7 nanometer wafer allocation to make Zen 2 APUs rather than going all in on Zen 3. The Lucien die is a bit smaller than Cezanne, so there are some cost implications. I'm just not sure the balance has worked out perfectly, especially when right below the 5700U is another Zen 3 part in the 5600U, which would have better single thread performance. It's a little bit complicated, I reckon, and unfortunately, most laptop vendors are choosing the Zen 2 designs over Zen 3. Maybe if they were all Zen 3, then they'd be forced into using great products like the 5800U. Anyway, that's it for this review. If you're interested in supporting our laptop testing, consider supporting us through our Patreon and Float Plan accounts. Links are in the description below. You'll gain access to things like our Discord community, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, all that good stuff. We will be shortly looking at the Ryzen 5 5500U as well, another sort of Zen 2 refresh. Should be pretty similar to prior gen processors as well, but we will figure all of that stuff out. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.